When the iPhone 15 Pro was announced, I was interested, but ultimately, I've decided not to upgrade from my iPhone 13 mini for now. This video is all about all the reasons why I've decided to stick with my 13 mini and wait to see what the iPhone 16 brings. Let's get into it. On my recent trip to Japan, I was filming intensely using my iPhone day after day, hour after hour. And to be honest, my 13 mini had a tough job handling the assignment. And there were two reasons, two reasons why I thought the 15 Pro Max might be a solution for the problems I was having with my 13 mini. First, let's talk about the lack of a telephoto camera on the 13 mini, what the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max have, and why I was disappointed with those Pro offerings. So yes, sometimes when you're traveling in and around new places, you need that close up shot. And no matter how close you try to get to the subject, it just isn't enough. Now, when the 15 Pro Max was talked about with rumors of a periscopic telephoto lens, I thought it was going to offer something way more than the three times zoom of the 14 Pro and Pro Max. But what's actually been delivered is only a five times zoom and only on the 15 Pro Max. The 15 Pro remains at three times zoom. Now that's pretty underwhelming and disappointing to me. And I did wonder why they had limited the zoom so much. In an interview on French website Numerama, Apple's VP of camera software engineering, John McCormack explained why the iPhone 15 Pro Max's Tetra Prism lens system is limited to five times optical zoom instead of 10 times like the Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. Apple says the telephoto lens on the iPhone 15 Pro Max features the company's most advanced camera stabilization system yet, with a combination of optical image stabilization and an autofocus 3D sensor shift module. McCormack said the iPhone's five times zoom can be stabilized incredibly well compared to a 10 times lens. The five times zoom is something that we can stabilize incredibly well, McCormick said in the interview. If you look at the 10 times zoom, unless you have the steadiest hands in the world or a tripod, it's really difficult to use, which is all fine, but why not give me, the consumer, that choice to make? I mean, that's what a gimbal is for, right? And I'm sure solutions could be found, including locking off a zoomed shot on a tripod. So for me, this was super disappointing and a deal breaker for me. It has been rumored that Apple plans to expand the Tetra Prism lens system to both iPhone 16 Pro models next year. But if it's still limited to just five times zoom, I don't think that will change anything for me. Okay, let's move on to the other issue that I had with my 13 mini that I hope the 15 Pro would solve and that's battery life and overheating issues. And yes, there's quite a few people who have been having problems with this on their new iPhone 15 Pros too. Lots of people have been reporting overheating issues with the Pro and the Pro Max. Now, Apple is denying that that problem is anything to do with the new titanium frame and aluminium substructure, and that they dissipate heat better than the stainless steel used in the prior Pro models. They maintain that this is an iOS problem that they're working hard to fix. Apple also explained that recent updates to some third-party apps on iOS 17, like Instagram, Asphalt 9, that racing game, and Uber, overload the A17 Pro chip's CPU, causing the iPhone to get warmer than normal. Now, the company is working with third-party developers to implement fixes for that. And the good news for the iPhone 15 Pro owners is that the iOS 17.0.3 update appears to have fixed the problems. The software patch doesn't reduce the performance of the powerful A17 Pro, just like Apple said. ZDNet, or ZDNet saw benchmark tests for iPhone 15 Pros running the iOS 17.0.3 update that proved that. But does the software fix actually solve the overheating issue? Thermal testing performed before and after that iOS 17.0.3 update by ZDNet shows the iPhone 15 Pros aren't getting hot after the fix. Great news if you're a 15 Pro owner, but not enough to get me over the line to buy one, especially when you consider the next odd problem with charging and the new USB-C port on the iPhone 15 models. There's been a number of cases where people have tried charging their iPhone 15 from a power bank and come back to a dead iPhone. 
here's what's going on. The iPhone 15 series of smartphones comes with the ability to reverse charge other smaller Apple devices, such as the Apple Watch, Apple AirPods, or another iPhone when using the USB-C charging cable. Well, that's how it's supposed to work anyway, but something is triggering this unexpected behavior. There's also a report of an iPhone trying to charge an iPad Pro connected via USB-C cable. And swapping around the cable allowed the iPad Pro to charge the iPhone like it was supposed to do. Now it's easy to point the finger at Apple here, but the reason for the mess is much more subtle. You may think that USB-C is a standard, and that standard is clear and followed by all manufacturers. The connectors on the ends of the cables might fit into the ports, but beyond that, USB-C, as seen in you and me, the consumer space, is a mad mix of old and new standards. It is made up of a whole bunch of cables, chargers, power banks, and other accessories that work with USB-C, but whose compliance with the standards is, shall we say, a little erratic. And I have to say, I'm not particularly surprised. Apple's gone from using a very tightly managed proprietary connector to one that, in theory, has stringent standards, but in reality, is far from the case. Apple either needs to improve the way the iPhone 15 detects items to charge, or add a software toggle which controls the direction the charge flows. Now, I expect Apple will patch this issue soon, but in the meantime, it's putting me off any upgrade. So yeah, weird overheating issues and charging issues aside, the major reason for me not upgrading my 13 mini is the disappointing upgrade for the 15 Pro Max telephoto lens. Upgrading to that would be a lot of money to pay for something that I think would be suboptimal for my ideal needs. I guess never say never and I'll wait to see some more footage, but right now I'll stick to my 13 mini as my daily driver and use my iPhone 11 Pro Max with two times telephoto zoom combined with my two times moment lens, bringing me up to a decent four times zoom when I need it. And I don't have to pay over 3,000 New Zealand dollars for a new phone. I'm keen to hear your thoughts, and maybe you'd like these videos too. Catch you on the next one, and have fun out there.